Hey everyone, it's Sarah Jane with Chic on the Cheap, and today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do here on my channel. This is a video I've been wanting to do for such a long time. Basically, these are 10 habits that completely changed my life and made me a happier, healthier person. I'm hoping this video can help you too. And now that I've said all of that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first habit I want to talk about is getting up early. Now, I am a YouTuber for a living and YouTubers are notorious for being night owls. And that's exactly what I was when I started my channel five years ago. I had really late nights and really late mornings. And I didn't make a change until about two years ago when I started waking up at 5 a.m. And this changed everything for me. Initially, I did this because my fiance works in construction and I wanted us to be on the same schedule. But I found once I started getting up at 5 a.m., I no longer had trouble falling asleep at night. I no longer felt like I was playing catch up throughout the day. My life felt more structured, more orderly and less rushed. And as an end result, I felt happier. And I know this isn't the easiest thing to do, but I promise you, once you start making this a habit, once you start getting up early on a daily basis, your body will adjust. And I will just tell you, this has made the biggest difference for me. And that's why I wanted to put this first in the video. Okay. So next I want to talk about social media. And this is something that I honestly struggle with the most. On one hand, social media is an incredible tool that connects us with those who are important to us. It helps us share our thoughts and our feelings, and it also helps us showcase our creativity and individuality. But on the other hand, studies have shown that social media is hurting our mental health and making a lot of us depressed. We all know the saying, comparison is the thief of joy. So as you're scrolling through your feed, looking at perfectly edited photos or videos of people's lives, it's easy to fall into a trap of thinking everyone's life is better or more exciting than yours. But the truth is so much of social media is just extremely fake. Not many people are getting on their feeds and talking about their bad breakup or their bad day. They're showing you the best moments of their lives and not the struggles of their day-to-day -day lives. Add in appearance altering beauty filters and face editing apps, and it's just a recipe for low self-esteem. So what can we do about this? How do we have a better relationship with our social media feeds so we're not left feeling bad or envious? after we look at them. Now I'll tell you a couple of things that have worked for me. And the first thing is a social media detox. At times I will go days without looking at my social media feeds. I will try to forget about them. These apps are designed to be addictive. And if you feel like you are just not being able to put down your phone, if you're looking at your social media feeds over and over again, maybe it's time for a detox. And the second thing I would recommend is unfollowing anyone who does not not bring you joy. If you open up your social media feed, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or even YouTube, and you're following a channel, a person, or just anything that does not make you feel good, if it makes you feel bad, you should unfollow them. Even if that is me, if I am not making you have a better life, if I make you feel bad, you can unfollow me as well. I don't want you to go, but I totally understand your social media feed is your feed and you need to make sure that you're protected protecting your mental health at all costs and only following people who make you feel good. The next thing you can do is be a more authentic version of yourself online. New research from Columbia Business School finds that when it comes to social media, authentic self-expression is more likely to benefit your overall well-being and happiness. And perhaps my best tip on dealing with the way that social media can make you feel is to practice gratitude. Gratitude helps you refocus on what you have instead of what you lack. For instance, I've started keeping a gratitude journal, making a habit to write down or share at least 10 things I am thankful for on an everyday basis. I take five minutes every morning to physically write those things down. So I'm taking some time to focus on the good and training my brain to think more positively. And it does take work because human beings are biologically predisposed to focus on the negative. So by practicing gratitude and thankfulness and making it a daily habit, there's no way you won't be feeling at least a little bit happier in your day-to-day -day life. This next habit is so incredibly important important to both your mental and physical health. And that is to exercise. And I'll just show you, this is me at this time last year, I was just living a very unhealthy lifestyle. I wasn't eating well, I wasn't exercising and I just wasn't very comfortable in my own skin, but it didn't really hit me until I saw photos of myself, these photos in particular, and I decided I needed a change. Now my problem has been being held accountable. I tend to get really caught up in my everyday life and my work. And, um, I just 
don't make it to the gym. It's an afterthought. And then two, I was having trouble finding an exercise routine that actually worked, something I could stick to and something I was not getting bored with. This is why I love Copilot and I'm so proud to say they've partnered with me on this video. Okay, so what is Copilot? Copilot is an affordable fitness coach app that provides personal workouts tailored to your goals and available equipment. You get accountability and support from a real person with the flexibility to work out on your own schedule. Getting started is easy. You just answer some questions like what kind of coach you would like, the kind of personality you look for in a coach, and what kind of equipment you have available to you. So don't worry if you don't have access to a gym. That's not a problem. These are workout plans that fit your routine and your life. Copilot will then match you with a coach. I was matched with Aaron and we hopped on a quick call where we introduced ourselves, got to know each other, and spoke about fitness goals so she could personalize a plan that was just right for me. This app is so easy to use. It guides you through every step of your workouts. You don't have to think about your workout. You just show up and do the work. I love that each exercise is shown on the screen so I can follow along. There is a clock that counts down your rest time and you'll hear cues from your coach throughout the workout. And check this out. At the end of each workout, you can rate and send your coach some feedback, tell them what you liked or disliked about it, and then they can adjust it to make sure you're happy. So for instance, with some of my workouts, I was finding that some weights were a little bit too heavy and others were a little bit too light. So I was able to just send a few quick messages to my coach and she was able to adjust my routine. Copilot is different from other fitness companies because people actually stick to it. Over 75% of Copilot clients continue to work out after 100 days, which means Copilot clients are nine times more successful at sticking to their goals. So if you're ready to give Copilot a try, then click on my link down in the description box below to get a free trial with your own expert fitness and health coach and get started on your exercise journey today. Okay, so this next habit goes hand in hand with exercising and taking care of your body, and that is self-care. Now, while this may seem pretty obvious, we're living in a world where we're expected to work long hours, to take less vacation days, and I don't know about you, but I feel more and more pressured every single day to be more productive. And with all of this work, it is leaving self-care as an afterthought instead of a priority. But did you know, engaging in a self-care routine has been clinically proven to reduce or eliminate anxiety and depression. It also reduces stress and minimizes frustration and anger. Remember, a self-care routine is all about you and what works for one person may not work for another. Maybe you like to read or watch your favorite TV show take a walk somewhere or complete a puzzle. Maybe self-care is making a smoothie or eating a healthy meal or taking a hot bath. It's all about you and what makes you happy. For me, it's all about quality time with my fiance. So when he gets home from work, I stop working so we can spend some time together watching a movie or a TV show. That is something I really love and it's a habit that I've put in place for my life. And again, self-care looks different for everyone and just remember that life is precious and it's meant to be enjoyed. Okay, so here's another thing that I have struggled with and that is clearing away clutter and also making cleaning a daily part of my life. Because I am always working on a YouTube video and living in a small space, clutter is the name of the game. But I have found that clearing away clutter can actually improve your mood. The Anxiety and Depression Association of America indicates that the physical activity of cleaning coupled with the end result of a cleaner home helps reduce stress, feelings of anxiety, and depressive symptoms. I am definitely a work in progress when it comes to this. I have really clean and tidy days and then days where I just lack the motivation to put things away. But what works for me is breaking every cleaning task into smaller jobs. Focus on one corner of a room or just one section. For me, it's our kitchen island that becomes a landing spot for just about everything. Breaking areas of your home down to clean makes the whole chore a lot more manageable. But one thing I have learned is that I cannot be a procrastinator when it comes to laundry. It is just so defeating walking into a room and seeing piles and piles of clothes that need to be put away and that pile just keeps growing the longer you procrastinate. So if I just do one load at a time and immediately put away the clothes, it's a lot easier to manage. Also, every couple of months, I recommend doing a purge. We're getting ready for a big purge because we're about to move into a house, but I am a big believer in getting rid of anything that you don't use or anything you don't think you'll use in the future because you can donate it and someone else can find joy in it. Okay, so next let's talk about friends. And friendship is one of the most important indicators when it 
it comes to happiness. But as we get older, making friends is harder and harder to do. According to Cygnus 2020 Loneliness Report, nearly half the people in the United States feel as though they lack companionship and feel isolated from others. If you've been with my channel for a while now, you may remember that at the end of 2020, I sold my house and I moved to Florida. I just got out of a relationship, so it was a big change for me. I was in a brand new state. I didn't have any friends, but I knew I wanted friends and I wanted to take charge of my life. It was just something that I knew I had to take action if I wanted my life to change. And there are a lot of different ways that you can make friends these days. There are a lot of different apps and stuff like that. But one app where I really had some great success was Bumble BFF. Instead of a dating app, it's an app for finding friends. And while I did meet a few people I didn't exactly click with, I met two of my closest friends that I am so thankful for. And I was even out with one of them when I met my fiance. Is it easy to put yourself out there? No, it's not. But it's kind of one of those things where it's like no risk, no reward. So you really have to get in the habit of taking a few social risks if you want to reap the reward of having friends. And I will tell you that I cannot imagine my life without the friends that I've made on Bumble BFF, but there are so many different friendship apps out there. You can try different ones. You can also look at different websites like Meetup. That's a really popular platform where you can join groups that share your similar interests. So one core component of happiness is having something to look forward to. And for me, that is traveling. So I'm always in the habit of making sure that I have some sort of trip planned in the future, no matter how small or how big. And even if you're alone, there are so many travel groups that you can join. Two years ago, I went with a travel group to Iceland and had the time of my life. There were a lot of people on the trip who came alone. So I'm just saying, don't let being alone stop you. And maybe traveling isn't your thing. You can try looking at local events and festivals that you can look forward to here in North Carolina. There is a Renaissance festival that I enjoy going to. It's fun to see the outfits and the jousting tournaments, or maybe there's a sports team you'd like to see play or grab some tickets to the theater. Maybe you enjoy concerts. You can see which artists are coming to your city. I love going to concerts. It's one of my favorite things to do. Basically, if you want to have something to look forward to, just look around. There are so many things that may spark your interest and give you something to plan so you can look forward to it. Now, speaking of concerts, the next thing I want to talk about is music. There's no doubt when you hear your favorite song, it automatically makes you a happier person. So one thing that I've done and something I recommend you do as well is create a happy playlist full of upbeat songs that you love and listen to that playlist when you're having a bad day or just when you need to spark some joy, whether I'm in the shower, working out, or just doing chores around the apartment, I am constantly making it a habit to listen to music. I do feel like this has helped me become a happier, healthier person, and maybe it will help you too. And the last habit I want to talk about is taking action. There's no change without change. We can talk about all the things we want to do, all the places we want to go, all the friends we want to make, the body we want to have, but none of those things are achievable without first taking action and being consistent. And once you make things consistent, then they will become a habit. Adding some discipline to your life will make all the difference. And I do think it will make you a happier, healthier person. All right, guys, so that's it. Those are 10 habits that have changed my life and made me a happier, healthier person. I hope this video helps you as well. Even if you just get one thing from it that helps you, that would just make me so happy and make this whole video worth it. Um, I did want to say a big thank you again to Copilot for sponsoring this video. If you want to start your fitness journey, be sure to click on the link down in the description box below. I love Copilot so much. and I know you guys will too. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until my next one, I'll see you then.